Now, there are three traditional, usual forms, if you will, of the supplemental essay. And we've kind of named them here. Some of them you might know right off the bat what they're talking about. And some of them, like the statement of purpose, take just a little bit longer to think about and, and understand what they are. But the two most common are probably what we call the why essay and the diversity statement. The why essay is very straightforward. It's very clear. As a matter of fact, Duke Law has one, and it just says, why do you want to go to Duke? And that's it. And they give you no word limit. They give you absolutely no word limit, but they want to know why you want to go to a particular school. Now, here's the deal with this particular why essay. You can't say, like Dave said before, I want to go to Harvard because I've been wanting to go to Harvard since I was five years old. That's going to do the exact same thing. The next thing you know, the admissions committee sitting the snooze button. That's all that's going to happen if you say something about that. The why essay has everything to do with how much you have investigated a school and determined that you are a great fit for them. Don't talk about what they can bring to you. Talk about what you can bring to them. They know they're awesome. That's why you're applying there. Tell them why you are awesome for them. Sell yourself. You have to think about yourself as a product that is being marketed. Would you buy a toothpaste that all they tell you is, well, the box is really pretty? No. You want to know that it's whitening, that it fizzes, that it bubbles, and that it will give you the best smile ever. And that's why you have to do with your supplemental essays, even if it's something as potentially insignificant as the why essay. Think about that. They're essentially asking you, why do you want to come here? I know that you wrote this great personal statement. I know that you wrote this, this great resume. I know you've got great grades, but why do you want us? Tell us why we should want you, and that's what you need to do. The diversity statement is another great supplemental essay, and I can't tell you enough how much this applies to everyone. The diversity statement is not just for minority applicants. Oh, no, not at all. Think about what makes you a diversity applicant. If, you've, if, if you're a white 22-year-old male, you may not think you're very diverse, but guess what? If you grew up in poverty, that makes you pretty diverse. If you grew up in a single-parent family with a dad instead of a mom, that makes you pretty diverse too. If you grew up in a 12-kid family, that's diversity as well. Diversity is not so much what your race might be or what country you're from, but what diversity you can bring to the community in a particular law school. Do your life experiences make you see things in a different way? Diversity as defined by a law school is not what color your skin is or what country you're from, but rather what you can bring to the intellectual conversation of a law school. That's diversity, and that's what determines whether you are a diverse candidate or not. The statement of purpose is actually something that's very much geared towards a specific specialty, a specific specialization. I want to go and study international law at XYZ school because of my experiences in the Coast Guard where I guarded this and I did that, or because of my experiences in internships with, in the summer with the CIA where I learned this and that. You have to explain why you want to go. This is the, this is the time where you actually say, this is why I want to go to law school. That's what the statement of purpose is. Not the personal statement, but the statement of purpose. Why do you want to do this? What is your purpose behind it? And I really want to call everyone's attention to more supplemental essay opportunities. When you are reading your application, don't simply read it with anything else in a fine-tooth comb, if you will. Every single sentence, every single question that doesn't have a yes or no checkbox next to it or that doesn't have a word limit on it is yet another supplemental essay opportunity where you can inject even more of your personality into that statement, into that essay, into that into that application, you have to ask yourself, am I interesting? Of course you're interesting. Analyze yourself. Come up with different ways to show, to play against type. If you're an engineer that also loves to sculpt, bring that up. Find a way to bring it up. That's where the supplemental essay opportunities come in. Play against type. Make, them, make the admissions committee sit up and shake the sleep out of their eyes and go, oh, really? Did I just hear that? This art major what, wins math competitions? What? That's awesome. Because then you know what? 60 minutes later, when they're on their coffee break, you know what they're going to say? Hey, how about that kid that won the math competitions and has, a, and has a painting? Isn't that crazy? And guess what? That means you just got an admissions letter. So just make sure that 
don't read your applications with anything other than a fine tooth comb and a big old magnifying lens looking for opportunities to add even more spice to your application. And let me just add to that by saying, you know, this is part of the application that you control. And the more opportunities that you see and that you take to actually write about yourself and to let them know who you are, the better off that you're going to be. Now, I also want to talk a little bit about the diversity statement. And Anne made some outstanding points right there. And I want to actually look at it from the side of the Law School Admissions Committee again, because they're the ones making the decisions. So we need to really get inside their heads a little bit. When when they talk about law school diversity, um, as she said, a lot of times people think that that means just race. It doesn't. It's a diversity of experience. They want to have people from different backgrounds with different experiences because they want to assemble a class that has all sorts of different viewpoints present. You know, the analogy that I often use, I'm a big sports fan, is you wouldn't want to make a football team out of 53 quarterbacks. They all play the same position. They all do the same thing. The team won't be that good. Well, in the same way, you don't want to assemble a law school class with a couple hundred of the same type of person. You need people with different backgrounds, different skills, different interests, so that when class is going on and you're talking about some really interesting law points, that different people will kind of come up with viewpoints that someone else might not have thought about. You might be listening to another student and think, gosh, I never looked at it that way. That's what creates richness in the law school experience. That's what their goal is. So when you have elements about yourself that are different than the so-called norm or what would be something that they'd see a lot of, you want to highlight those ideas and bring them out. 